Hello, viewer. It's great having you on the show today, and welcome to another edition of Viewpoints. It is an exciting and interactive talk show with the talk I'm as a B. On the show, we talk about anything and everything changing, ranging from entertainment to politics, health, education, lifestyle, power of community, you just name it. All you need to do is sit back, enjoy, and engage in our conversations. My name is Hadiza Galadima, and right here with me in the studio are my amazing co-host, Confidence. Hi, Hadiza. Hi, Peace. Hi, Confidence. <laughs> and the amazing Peace. Hi, Hadiza. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. All we do on the show is pack meaningful conversations, inspire change within our community as we engage in honest dialogue. And now straight to the business of the day. Let's get started. In the words of Benjamin Desreli, power has only one duty, to secure the social welfare of the people. So we will be discussing hot topics in Nigeria today. Our first topic will be discussing about the withdrawal of mobile policemen from ex-governors, ministers, and VIPs. We will also be talking about body enhancement. And our last topic, we will be talking about fake life. All this and more after the break. Please stay with us. Welcome back, and thanks for staying with us. This is Viewpoint, talk show with Itoka CB. So the Inspector General of the Nigerian Police Force has withdrawn mobile police personnel attached to several VIPs, including ex-governors, former ministers, and lawmakers. This is coming in a bid to realign the priorities of the Nigerian Police Force to take back its place in the internal security architecture of the country. Thousands of police personnel were attached to public officials, ex-political office holders, businessmen, and other private individuals, thus reducing the number of police personnel required to protect the public, while fewer officers were available for core police duties like investigation and patrol. Statutorily, only the president, vice president, local council chairman, legislative principal officers in the state and federal levels, magistrates and judges are entitled to police protection. Now, the question is, is this the expected restructuring from the Nigerian police? <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is super story. This is a wonderful question. I think this is a super, super story. <laughs> this is <laughs> Nigeria. This is <laughs> Nigeria. Restructuring? Nah. It ain't gonna happen. It's Not the this Nigeria. For me. It ain't gonna happen. Nope. <laughs> no, because... You know, every time everybody come, I think I don't. I, where was I reading it? I don't know who was saying that. Uh, that it's a norm. It's a norm. Every new IGB comes up and starts. They decide. Oh, we are going to dismantle. Oh, we are going to do this. We are going to withdraw. We are going to retrieve. We are going to scatter. We are going to undo, bind, cast, and everything we are going to do. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, nothing happens. At the end of the day, it's initial bra bra. The first few weeks we do, they do that, and then at the end of the, because of course that is the reason why some a lot of crime happening as community. Because mm -hmm. the police are employed, but they're not they're not doing what they're employed to do. They are busy protecting individuals that can afford the protection. These are public in, um, officials protecting private individuals. Mm -hmm. So when things happen, when they are busy protecting, they just want to protect one man. How will they leave that woman and go and be fighting the fight that does not concern them? That is what we have. So the structure and the question, is this the expected structure from Nigerian police? Mm -hmm. Omar, we waited to see it too. Because for me like this, uh, I ain't got no faith. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> in this no nah, i just i really i i believe and i don't just speak for myself but i speak on behalf of many nigerians mm -hmm. when we say let's wait and see what will happen mm -hmm. it's not just this initial grab it's not just initial they've withdrawn or they will withdraw in the next six months are the police officers do they stay withdrawn mm -hmm. or are they going to withdraw them publicly and then start privately start sending them back one after the other mm -hmm. like you get it. you should stop taking us off from this Confidence. <laughs> think? You know, when you asked the question at first, and I still laughing, mm -hmm. it was funny to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> withdrawing the police officers from the um, private individuals, ex um, ministers, ex governors, ex officials, it's like one step. It's like um, a little part in the whole problem. Mm -hmm. Because nobody's talking about the fact that some policemen are lawless. Nobody's talking about the fact that there's a lot of cutting down to do 
in the police force. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, withdrawing them from, it's not, you know, it, how would I explain now? It's not just taking them, you know, away from uh, private individuals mm -hmm. that, like colleagues, that, that, that defines restructuring. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to do inside the police force, mm -hmm. look at the like a reorientation. Look at the NSAS protests. Mm -hmm. It's not police. It's you not understand? There's, they should and there's, there's, there's the, there's there's a, the police orientation for they them. See the NSAS, NSAS protests. And they, initially, they kept people students, as in not just students, Nigerians all across the nation so got fed up and came and cried and said, restructure these people or dismantle, scatter. If, if they're not doing what they were employed for, scatter, do something else. And then they said, oh, we are going to do, and then they gave them a renaming ceremony. They went, I went to the backyard, conducted a renaming ceremony and brought them mm -hmm, back, mm -hmm. put them out as, I've forgotten what they now call them. But that is not just restructuring, just like you're saying, restructuring goes far deeper. Reorientation, retraining, like, the police force is not is not attractive to get. It's not something somebody wakes up and decides. I have, I don't know how many confidence have you seen. How many people that wake up and decide my dream well, is to be a police? Well, there are, there, are, there are a lot of people who actually. Well, I said a lot because mm -hmm. you know you can't just um, General, map out exactly. Yeah. There are some people that their dream is to actually you know go into the force. Mm -hmm. Well, my take on so this whole thing change. is that you know, like I said before, there's a lot of reorientation that needs to be done mm -hmm. for the police force. This is, like I said, it's just one part in a whole mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these Nigerian police, when they come out in the road, you're asking yourself, is this a policeman? Mm -hmm. I, I think I remember the last time, the last time I was at um, a police station, that was years back. Mm -hmm. I remember, as young as I was, I remember seeing the uh, like call it a placard or like a signboard, a very little signboard that says police is your friend. And as young <laughs> as I was, I was like, hmm. you know, I wasn't so young, like as a teenager, I was like, hmm, police is my friend, really. So for me, I feel like maybe there's not maybe there is more to be done. It's not the expected restructure because, like Peace rightly said, this is Nigeria. We already know Nigeria is such a dramatic country. Mm -hmm. They might withdraw these people, and then at the end of the day, go back as them. Well, you know what? Let's just make the public happy. Let's take them back. Because the reason why they start talking about withdrawing them is because people start talking. So why would you people reduce police officers to you know be, become like why would one man have ten? Police officers, that yeah, if anything wants to really happen to this man, it will happen to him. I don't know if you understand. So I feel like it's not the expected restructuring because a lot needs to be done. They shouldn't just do one thing and come out and say, hey, that we have done it. There's a lot of work <laughs> As in, inside. And you know, recently I watched a movie. I said, not movie. I watched a short clip somebody recorded. Police people they were having a, um, a fracas somewhere. They were having an issue with the public. Mm -hmm. And do you know all of a sudden, and this thing, it chilled me to my bone and it made me scream, is this Nigeria? You know, a policeman got inside his vehicle. The policeman that was having an issue with it. Like, I think he was having an issue with one person and then people gathered around. Like, is it because you're wearing uniform you think I'm bullying? And so when, when they now it noise became too much, the policeman got inside his vehicle and moved and somebody was in his front. I think I remember and he hit, he hit, about. you see, he hit somebody down and they were shouting at him, stop. And this man came and declined. It chilled me to the bone. Yeah. I was like, I Jesus, I saw that was watch the protect. video. I saw the except, ah, you know, down there. That the man being, it, it, it but chilled I me. Like, I, couldn't, I couldn't watch it because I'll ask in myself. In Nigeria. My children or the generation coming, how do you explain to them that police is your friend? Guy. When you talk about restructuring, it's uh, like you have to go deep. There's a lot of re everything. Re everything, re orientation, like yeah, training. Yeah, I, re I, I, I will agree with confidence. I'll agree with both of you because it's like when you do, when we have to talk about reform because that was the exactly. main reason of emphasis. Reform, like okay, let's reform these people. Reform. Let's upgrade their mm -hmm. pay because most of these policemen that you are withdrawing would even want to go back because they are being treated well. Of course, by whoever they are. Yeah, they are that's being treated. That's that's so, they be, so they will want to go back. That's so even angle. if you withdraw them and all that, they wouldn't want to do that. We would love to hear from you, our viewers, your take as regards the withdrawal. Of police, of mobile police personnel from ex governors, ex ministers, and lawmakers. Do you get engaged in our social media platform and handles in our comment sections? We would love to hear from you, all right? We'll be going on a short break. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Moving to our second topic of the day, we will be talking about body enhancement. And body enhancement refers to the technique 
procedure or products that aim to improve the appearance, function, or performance of one's body. Many people choose to enhance their bodies through plastic surgeries, implants, and other procedures to improve their appearance. While some of these enhancements may be done for medical reasons, others are done for aesthetic purposes. However, some individuals may use these enhancements as a way to mask in their own insecurities about their bodies. Body enhancements may give the person a temporary boost in confidence, but does not necessarily address the underlying securities that they are feeling. For example, a person who is insecure about their breast size may undergo a breast augmentation procedure to improve their appearance. While this may make them feel better for a time, a little time, the underlying securities may linger and may start to and they may start to focus on aspects of other aspects of their bodies that they want to change, making it so addictive. Some of these individuals will consistently seek new ways to improve their appearance, like touching other parts of their mm -hmm. body. So the question is, do you think, do you think, yeah, that body enhancement is a facade or for insecurity or is a form of individuality of expression to boost self-confidence? Confidence. Confidence. <laughs> <laughs> because my name is Confidence, <laughs> right? Let's start with that. <laughs> okay, um... Well, this is this is a very this is a <laughs> wonderful topic, wow. you know, because it's part of the matters arising. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I like, was increased personally, um, while not trying to judge, because yeah. you know you have to come at this from a balanced mm -hmm. place. Yeah, yeah. So, for me personally, um, the first question, because the question is in two parts, mm -hmm. part A and B. Mm -hmm. The first question, you know, you you were saying something about if is, is it a facade, facade for insecurity? Mm -hmm. Now, the truth is, yes. For some people, it is a facade for insecurity. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of things, you know, out there, like on our, was it our last shows? We talked about BBL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you see some people out there, somebody just wakes up in the morning and is like, God, me, I don't like the way you created me. And mm. I think I if I'm able to, you know, go to a doctor and you adjust some part of my body, I think I should be okay. And you now find people going to argument, you know, certain parts of their body to make them look more appealing, more mm -hmm. beautiful. And complications will always arise, you know, from these things. BBL is just the first of many. Mm -hmm. There are people that do Botox. There are people that... There is a lot of it. There is a lot of it. Their nose, nose job, lip job. I've seen a lot of people, you know, develop infections from these things, mm -hmm. become maimed for life. So, yes, I feel like at some point it's a, it's, it's a disguise for mm -hmm. insecurity. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who are insecure about themselves. Yeah. And, you know, this insecurity could come from, okay, I'm fat. Mm -hmm. And then instead of looking for a better way, maybe exercising, going on a diet, talking to a nutritionist Jeez. who knows what it is they are doing, they decide, mm -mm, let me opt for body aug augmentation. augmentation and most times some of these people do not sit down to actually do their research they don't sit down to do a research on what they want to do that's why you have a lot of people dying from complications mm -hmm. of for example mm -hmm. bbl mm -hmm. a lot of people die from the complications of bbl a lot of people die from the complications of nose job lip job a lot of things are happening now to the second part the se what was your second yeah, question? It's a again? form of individuality of expression hmm. of self confidence. Mm. To mm. some extent, right? Mm. I don't know. Personally, my own view on this is not. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's mm -hmm. not. I have always been. I know that things happen to people. Mm -hmm. People sometimes go for all this body augmentation, you know, body enhancement. Mm -hmm. Maybe as a so result of focus. yes, medical purposes. Yeah, there are people that had you know this fatal mm -hmm. accident. I've seen a lot of movies. I've read documentaries where you know they have to restructure the face. Mm -hmm. Maybe this person just that really is, has to wear Botox for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. But you see. The people that want to do it so that I can be more confident. And you see a lot of people come out and they're supporting these people. And I'm asking myself, where is the society going to? Leave the medical reasons aside. Where are we going to? You're telling somebody, you're pushing somebody, yes, go. Um, do tummy talk. Do this. Do that. You know, there are some people that when they lose mm -hmm. weight, right? Mm -hmm. They have that, you know, flappy skin. Mm -hmm. Now, that's different, you know? Exactly. You've lost weight, your skin has stretched mm -hmm. to a point where even when you wear clothes, you're still seeing the folds there. Now that's understandable. You have to go to the hospital, they cut it off, you know, like patch you up and everything. But it's different. It's a different ballgame for people who decide they just wake up one day, they look at themselves, they turn like this, they turn like that, and they look at their favorite celebrity or their icons mm -hmm. and they're like, 
mm, I think I want to be like this person. Like when Michael Jackson was alive, you could see the craze. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wanted to do their nose like Michael Jackson's nose. Like, you know, Change and, skin color. And, you know, and, and then you're asking yourself when complications, when you develop complications from these things, who do you want to blame? You know, who exactly is the blame going to go to? Um, who's, who exactly are you going to apportion the blame to? So for me personally, I really feel like body enhancement, right? On the, it, it has a positive angle. And then for this craze in our generation now, it's bad. Because a lot of people are dying and people are not telling them the mm -hmm, truth. Mm -hmm. That's my take. Well, for me, um, okay, just like it says, um, the, everything that has a good side has a bad side. Yes, definitely. So um, medically... Now, I, I sit here to speak as somebody who has a reason to do plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I have a legit reason. Mm -hmm. um, if, you are, if, you, if you are looking at the scar on my forehead, I had an accident when I was young, and I could have chosen to do plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. But um, it wasn't an option that I wanted to explore. My yeah. parents weren't even in support of it. They just, so I had to learn over time. I had to go through the process of being bullied, of um, rising, of becoming confident. And now, myself. yes, definitely. Yeah. And now, appreciating myself my skin. And now, eh, if somebody tells me, go and do plastic surgery, I don't know that thing that will make me. I don't know that thing that will make me go under the knife. And say I, I want, the I want to it's very expensive. Let's not Thank you. Let's not even go there. The I don't know what to make me want to go under the knife and say I want to, because I want to look like. like. And I say this as somebody who has a legit reason for that. Mm -hmm. But then there are people who do not. To answer the first question, is it a facade for security? Definitely. A lot of because people. definitely it's a facade for a second for me and I'm saying again like I said as somebody who has a right to mm -hmm. yet I had to learn to be secure in my skin mm -hmm. even with the so called you didn't call the accident to yourself I had to learn to do that I had to learn to become secure in my skin so now even if I walk in today if I walk into a distance and maybe I have the money let's say for example something wonderful happens and I walk into a plastic surgery I'm, I'm Hospital. Yeah, hospital. And I do this surgery and I come out. I'm not doing it because I wanted to be confident. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it because there's a need and absolutely yes. important need for it. Not because so I wanted to be confident. Mm -hmm. That is one. Mm -hmm. So yes, if the question personally, I believe yes, it's, it's um, a facade for insecurity. Mm -hmm. Because why will you just like confidence said, why will you want to God protected you and decided and if nothing is wrong with nothing you. Nothing like that's why I just said it's different. If it's a medical my thing. cheek, I just said my device my cheek now. I don't like it. I like <laughs> I want it more angle. Oh, you know, oh, exactly. I want yeah. to be chicken somebody. So now I'm gonna do it. You know, that's and then the second question is a form of individualism. It, it, what is individual self yeah, yeah, what is self-expression called? <laughs> Which kind of expression are you expressing? Like but you are going to Is it, Ah, no. Self, self confidence. Like, why you, you are going to You know the funny part of this whole thing? There are some mm -hmm. people that don't actually. This is when we talk about the medical side of it. Mm -hmm. There are some people that really don't want to, no. to go on that denial. Of yeah. course, definitely. You know, like, people that have you know broken body parts. Or yeah, they are not even interested in it. They are not even interested in it. Because they they just those ones, they've been under the knife. They've been yeah. legit. They've, uh, they had legit medicine. People are telling us that these things are painful. Funny asthma is painful. Oftentimes, it's when the when the, the only time you hear the news is when somebody when something products. goes wrong. Oh, okay. When okay, something okay. goes wrong, that's when you come online. They're like, ah, yeah, ah, yes. But when that person was doing, <laughs> you two, you're busy. Ah, slay queen, slay mm -hmm. mama. You're busy. But it's only when things go wrong that's when you come to see them. So, see so be very <laughs> careful because ah, uh, no <laughs> body enhancement, body augmentation, whatever, it, whatever name it is it's called. called. Mm -mm. I don't. <laughs> well, our viewers would love to hear your take as regards body enhancement because my who who's they are not they are not just having it at all. Who's <laughs> <laughs> just getting just get involved? Well, like I said, I balance it. <laughs> <laughs> getting involved. No, my, if it's, see if I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. If the health thing is your own, no problem. But if it's not your own, if you say it's uh, you no, want to be secure, to beg you. you want to be confident. Even the confidence on that side says so she doesn't think it's confident. So please <laughs> do get involved in that comment section. <laughs> we we'll love to hear from you. Right, we'll be going on a short break. Please stay on. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Moving on to our next topic, which is our last topic for today, where we'll be talking about luxury living. And there is a popular saying which goes, Fake it. Do you make it? Fake it. Do you make it? Mm. Ah. So fake life luxury living mm. refers to creating or portraying a lavish and extravagant lifestyle that is not truly reflective of one's financial means or reality. It involves flaunting expensive possessions, traveling to luxurious destinations, and participating in high-end activities, all in the attempt to create illusion of wealth and success. This leads to financial strain and debt, and it can also create a sense of emptiness and dissatisfaction. 
So, <laughs> kids. You know what I'm thinking? Sorry. Your take. You know what I'm thinking? Ah, Nigeria. You know that they're talking about bringing the credit system from mm. the US down to Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. If they bring that into Nigeria, eh, this fake life, we're not going to be talking about it. It will be on the street. We're just going to touch on the face like this. It's already looking at that. As in, like... Everywhere, like go. everywhere, oppression. Everybody, well, for the people that want to be oppressed. Thank you. Oppressing mm-hmm. of names, left, right, and center. Ah, mm-hmm. Everybody is just doing their own thing. Somebody, ah, somebody is making. <laughs> who was who was like who was saying it that I will come and arrest you because if I come and arrest and press your neck now. It's my kidnapper. I come and press your neck. That's why they don't know that now. She going because walking up and down, making you look as if your father is the ex governor or the current governor. Yeah. At the end of the day, now by the time they come to arrest you now, ah, we start to hear. Well, fake life is so now. I was thinking about this credit system mm-hmm. in Af- in America, in mm-hmm. UK, I think in developed countries where you can just go get a credit card depending on your credit rating. Mm-hmm. You look at a credit card and you can get things, you can purchase things, you can buy things, you can pay for things, and you can pay after. Mm-hmm. In our Nigeria, my dear brother and sister, <laughs> 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 you see, uh, confidence, please. Don't that me. company will run down. <laughs> yeah. because, oh. Hmm. My take on this whole um, luxury living fake life, living above, above your means. Mm-hmm. I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to begin and where to end because this is a canker worm that has eaten so deep into the fabrics of the lives of, of this generation. Not just the country, but this particular generation. Mm-hmm. It's so prevalent now. Everybody just wants to belong. Mm-hmm. And let's not even talk about the pressure that social media brings. Everybody just wants to belong. Like you see your friend, your friend is, is, is you don't know what that person is doing, but you want, sleep. exactly, you don't, you don't know what the person is doing, but you want to live that kind of life. And you know, it's so prevalent. It's so, I don't know whether it's just in Abuja. It's so much here. Yeah, I mean, even before I came everywhere. to Abuja, I heard a lot of things. They were like, hmm. If you're okay, when I gained admission, I was mm-hmm. in school, and then because I'm this kind of person, I don't really go out so much. Mm-hmm. I'm not, um, I'm not crazy about you know. I'm not so eager about, about the things. That, I'm not, I'm not extra. Let me just put it that mm-hmm. way. So when I hear things like, "Oh, I'm going to town," and then you see some of this school people, the students doing so much, and like, where did you say you're going? But I'm going to Silverbed Cinema. I'm like. Okay, and now, you are you? asking to so person for clothes, you're asking to so person for bag to go and see, see a movie, sit down, just see a movie. or to go to town to eat. Bit what is the problem? You know, I began to question, I began to ask a lot of questions. I was like, so what will happen if you wear the jean you have? What will happen if you wear the t shirt you have? Pimp yourself, look good in your skin, feel comfortable, and then you go. Why, why, why do you have to like? Why do people mm. have to go extra mile to make themselves so uncomfortable just because you want people to see you as to like appear as something they are not? I remember, to appear as something you are not, you know, buying things to impress people that don't like you. That's that's that is the thing. That is that word. People that don't like you. you people just, that don't even see you. see you. I remember one time. One time I had to go. <laughs> One time I had to go somewhere, somewhere posh, mm-hmm. very expensive at that point. And then that day, in fact, it was a surprise. Somebody just called me, come and meet me at this place. And Aww. I thought, oh, I just, I said, just my sister, I put on my slippers, <laughs> my bathroom slippers. I wore my casual gown because I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. Please mm-hmm. don't stress my life. You just mm-hmm. called me out. Come on. Nah. So I just put it on, put it on. And I went there and person said, let's enter inside. And I looked down at my leg. I was like, well, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> you got the it is what I have. Know. Nobody will stress my life. And so I walked into that place. When I came back to tell my people that I went out, that I look at the place I went to be sleep out, they're like, Jesus Christ. You, you did what? <laughs> you had some And I was like, but that's, that is me being real. Mm-hmm. By the time you see me with my slippers there, you not tomorrow if you see me with um slippers elsewhere, you will not be like, okay, ah, this is this person. Yeah, no, this I am, it's a slippers thing. Yeah. I am a slippers person. I am not ashamed of my slippers. It is, and that's one thing about this fake life. Yeah. We are what you have on, on what you have. Because just like confidence said, social media has thrown everybody. Come somebody come on social media and tell you N two hundred K which is in your phone. That person is not making up twenty K using their phone. They are selling courses that will make you N two hundred, will tell you N two hundred K. And then that person is living a life, a fake life, a borrowed life mm. on social media and you'll see, ah, this nice person is doing. I want to go and do it and N two hundred K. That person has not seen twenty K. What am I even saying twenty K? That person that 
Urgent two K. Person living on urgent two K donate donations. <laughs> well, that ah. doesn't that doesn't that doesn't mean that you know as a person you shouldn't dress well. No, of mm-hmm. course, dress well. You, you look, look well. Live within your means. That's what we're saying. And you know, it's 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 so bad because you know you go out to places. I'm using Abuja as an example because it's things that of seen. course fake life is prevalent. Like Bar, yeah. You say you want to go to Metama, and then you see somebody trying to outdress. You don't have this thing in your wardrobe. You don't have, and then you're trying to for God's sake. If you feel like okay. Where I'm going, I'm, I'm not really prepared for it. Mm-hmm. Then why don't you just stay back? Then you find people going to the extent of borrowing. Exactly. You know, they are going the extra mile like for wrong that, things. I just like people that are going so the extra much. mile for wrong things. But I'm asking myself, sometimes I sit and I ask myself, I say, if we as young people, mm-hmm. or if people out there, because it's not just young people, even our elders, some people do it. Of course, definitely. If you put this energy that you're putting, going the extra mile to grow stuff, you know, try to in live the life that you know that right you can't thing. afford. If you put it into the right thing, for God's sake, you will go I, I, I contrast the whole, we will have gone farther than it is right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's just it. And one thing with uh, fake life is they are always, they are always living on a fast lane. You always want, to, you always see a situation fast. whereby someone who has worked for over 20 years yeah. to achieve a level of luxury yes, in their lives, yes. then you out of nowhere, you'll be like, I want to live like this person. Like you said earlier. start to go the extreme. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and doing thing, all the unimaginable. Things. Yeah, so as... And they're paying heavy prices for, for it. it. Of course, because there's always a consequence for every action. As a pursuit for material possessions and external validation, it does not necessarily lead to true happiness and fulfillment. It is important to prioritize authenticity and genuine experiences over the superstitious trappings of luxury. Living within one's means and focusing on self-growth and meaningful connections can lead to a more fulfilling and sustainable lifestyle. That's it on today's edition of Viewpoint. You already know. Talk show. With the talk am as you be. We really do appreciate you and your time greatly. Let's do this again. Same place, same time. We would love to hear from you. So be a part of our conversation by dropping your opinions on our comment sections. And don't forget to follow all our social media handles displayed on your screen for more exciting and captivating episodes of Viewpoint. Also do subscribe and turn on the little notification bell on our YouTube channel at Willike TV. Our website is Willike.tv. Till we come your way again. See you next time. Bye.